uh, first, I need to clarify a uh, confusion I personally caused yesterday. I didn't I realize it at the time. Most of, most of you were not confused. But yesterday I began uh, extemporaneous comments by saying and that the activities of the last two days, I think I gestured to the atrium, were entirely appropriate. I was talking about the protesters and those who came to express their uh, views and the strength of those views. They are welcome here today, every day, and uh, what they've done is completely appropriate. It was not to condone the activity of the House caucus, which is completely unacceptable, of course. Uh, but uh, rereading my own comments, I could see how they could have been misconstrued, and a couple people did. So just for those of you who did misunderstand, my bad, but uh, I don't want any qu question left. Huge distinction between people exercising their First Amendment rights and people who take a public paycheck, walk off the job, go to another state, and try to wreck the uh, democratic process. The House Democrats have shown a complete contempt for the democratic process. The way that works, as we all learned in grade school, is that you, uh, if you seek public office, you come do your, du your duty, you argue, you debate, you amend if you can, you vote no if you feel you should. If you're not successful, you go home and take your case to the voters. You don't walk off the job, take your public t paycheck with you, and attempt to bring the whole process to a screeching halt. You know, if they persist, the Democratic Party of Indiana will need a rebranding effort because this is as anti-democratic as behavior can be. Um, all that said, I think they deserve another chance. Uh, let the heat of the moment uh, uh, cool, I hope. Maybe uh, if their leadership doesn't have a conscience about the unconscionable things they've done, maybe individual members do. But I do hope that uh, having made their point, uh, scored one victory on the big issue, they will decide to come back to work and let's do the people's business together. I can tell you, I don't know what will happen. I don't know um, how we'll proceed. I can tell you what won't happen. We will not be bullied or blackmailed out of pursuing the agenda we laid in front of the people of Indiana. That agenda is going to get voted on. If we take special sessions from now to New Year's, we will hold them, and we will send the bill to Speaker Bauer and to the Democratic Party of Indiana. I see no reason for that to be necessary. They can come back, I hope they will, tomorrow. Um, and we can just get on with business. And um, uh, that's what uh, I would appeal to them to do. Uh, I hope as a whole group. If not, then maybe perhaps individuals in the caucus who have gone along uh, because that's what good caucus members do, but may decide their conscience tells them they should do their duty instead. Congressman, any contact with any members of the House Democratic Caucus? <clears throat> the minority leader calling, saying, hey, here's what our position is. Can you help us out with your party? No, I had a conversation with Steve Stemmler, who is a man of conscience and who did refuse to go along with this, um, but that's the only one. They don't understand the situation at all. I would just tell them this, that the, we are in pursuit of an important reform agenda that I think these critics, whoever they are, would support vigorously. It has been seriously endangered by this uh, um, activity that uh, we're seeking to bring to an end now. And um, my goal all along has been the successful pursuit of that agenda, and that's what we're trying to do today. Does it have anything to do with 2012? That's also what these same critics are saying, that maybe some of your reactions have to do with looking ahead to 2012? No, and you know, I, I don't know what to say to people who only think about the world in political tactical terms. They cannot comprehend people, but let me tell you, we have some here in Indiana who are just interested in results, and we're trying to do some very important things for our state reform and improvement of public education, continuation of tight budgets and no tax increases, reform of criminal justice, reform of local government, all in the interest of taxpayers. That's what we're entirely about. If I was actually thinking about this theoretical question you ask, I'd probably be pursuing a very different course. It makes me wonder 
you know, how savvy these questioners are if they think that uh, uh, what we're doing here uh, would actually help you in that pursuit. Yes and yes. Minority Leader Bauer launched some sessions and he says he'd like to have negotiations with his group. Do you, do you interact? I'm, not, I'm not negotiating with anybody who walks off the job and takes a pa taxpayer's check with him. Speaker Bauer has cost uh, this has, uh, state a lot of money already in um, the taxpayers, and uh, uh, he has embarrassed himself, his caucus, and his party. If he keeps it up, he'll embarrass the entire state. So he needs to get himself back to work. Uh, before I'm interested in talking to him about anything. Governor, should there be the undertaking? Should we talk about that today? I have no opinion. That, you know, they, as far as I know, they've spent it in the sporting goods stores of Illinois already. Governor, what do you say to critics who look at Indiana, also Ohio, and of course Madison, and say that this has been a coordinated effort uh, by Republicans to bust through these nationwide? Well, people say a lot of preposterous things. I guess that, that may be the champion uh, uh, for the day. And I don't get that at all. You know, this is the last thing we wanted to happen. And, um, uh, you know, the um, um, bills that we brought forward on our agenda are bipartisan with a vengeance, including uh, many uh, education changes that President Obama and his secretary are pursuing right now. So what I think we see is a concerted national campaign to overturn the results of the last election. You know, I will say thank you to the many out-of-state visitors that have been in our state house the last day or two. We appreciate their bringing their tourism dollars here um, as they've come in from elsewhere to uh, support their Indiana allies. Have you changed your stance on possibly trying to get, using your powers to get them back here to have a discussion with Illinois? Is there anything you can do? Uh, there may be, but I'm not going to do that. You know, if their conscience uh, is not enough to bring them back to work, they've disgraced themselves and their party. And if that's not enough, then uh, I don't see that we should divert public safety resources that we need to protect Hoosiers on the, in their homes and on the highways from uh, their duties. And no, we won't do that. I'm sorry? Well, it's not for me to say, you know. There'll be no business as long as they stay in Illinois. It's entirely in their hands. And the first step, obviously, is for them to um, stop doing the indefensible, come back to work. You know, if they didn't intend to take part in the process, they shouldn't have run for office in the first place. And if they d decline now to respect the democratic process, then they really ought to step aside and let somebody who's prepared to be responsible to the taxpayers take their spot. Governor, Mr. Bauer said this morning that uh, vouchers and collective bargaining for teachers uh, absolutely must come off the table for them to return. It is not happening. It is not happening. It is non-negotiable. Non we will not be bullied or blackmailed out of an agenda that we ran on and responsibly laid before the uh, public and the General Assembly. Uh, has nothing to do with right to work or any of these other questions. And um, I know he doesn't like the results of the last election. In his shoes, I wouldn't either. But uh, that doesn't justify what they've done. And, um, you know, I promise you that we will find a way to have an up or down vote on these issues if it takes all year. Is there anything Governor, that in, the, in the past, Republicans <clears throat> Well, clearly it's uh, unprecedented. This includes the budget, includes bills that have already passed both houses. They want all this stuff in their ultimatum. They want all this stuff gone, the timing at the last minute before uh, the break point of the session. Uh, nobody ever went to a neighboring state before and, and uh, took their paycheck with them. So I wasn't here for all these other occasions, but um, you know, as a one-day demonstration, uh, to make a point, perhaps uh, on a single issue, as I, we thought they might be doing, might be only a slightly out of line. What's been done here, we've never seen before, and, and uh, let's hope we know it again.
You'd have to ask them. You know, I, I've been wrong already. I told you yesterday I, uh, I thought they'd uh, make a point, possibly score a victory, and get back to work. I was wrong. I hope that uh, today I'm right, that maybe one more day of this really uh, embarrassing experience will be uh, all they intend to inflict on the state. I, I seriously hope that I'm correct. Governor, what point do we approach a legislative meltdown if the Democrats don't come back? I got all year, <laughs> and I don't melt. And uh, so, you know, so they can continue to humiliate themselves and their party for a long time. I, you know, I suppose if I thought about this in partisan terms, I ought to be sending thank you cards. You know, that if we needed any evidence why the Democratic Party has been thumped in the last several elections, they're providing it right now by their behavior. But that's not what this is about. So I'd rather they come back, will let bygones be bygones, and move ahead. And they can argue as strenuously as possible. We can hear their ideas about amendments and changes and uh, do the people's business as it's supposed to be done. That's still my preference, not scoring points, not, uh, you know, gaining some advantage for some future campaign. Is there any changes that you think that could be made that will make vouchers and um, charter schools acceptable to Democrats? There's already been a lot of changes. They brought the income le levels down very substantially. Again, they put caps on the uh, scholarships. Um, so I don't know. Um, whether uh, these additional changes, it already says, has been changed to say that student must start in public school. The public schools get first shot at everybody. Uh, only if the family, uh, uh, having experienced public schools, thinks that a different place is, is good for their child. All these changes have been made already. Maybe there are some more. But uh, judging from their behavior right now, I'm not sure that um, anything would uh, pacify them. One hundred percent. Yeah. Senate voted down township government reform that you were more or less championed. Yeah. What's your reaction to that? Disappointment. <coughs> Serious disappointment. I don't know if we have a chance to uh, you know, revive it in some other fashion. Uh, there were bills moving in both houses, and I'm not sure how all that one will shake out. Well, of course, if the House Democrats stay out, all these questions become moot. And uh, so my first goal is to see if we can't first appeal to their conscience, um, take a, a measured stance and welcome them back, um, um, get back to business, and then we'll see if this and many, many other issues that are right now hanging by a thread uh, have a future. <clears throat> No, I'm unaware of anything uh, alarming. I thought the music got better. <laughs> I thought the Dixieland band was darn good, and, and, and one guy could sing just beautifully. The, the, the Dylan impersonator needed a little work, I thought. But, uh, uh, you know, I, I don't know. Again, this is the statement I, I tried to make yesterday and didn't make myself clear. Um, I may disagree with these folks, but... Their activity is entirely proper and legitimate. And um, I, I think it's important to note they speak for a minority. Private sector unionism in Indiana is 8% of the workforce, for instance. And uh, those who are here represent a tiny, tiny, tiny percentage of Indiana workers. But that said, um, they have every right to be here. And as far as I know, they haven't done anything uh, that you know, un um, toward and and out of out of line. I think this is just. I mean, listen. Look, come on. No minority. I've been out here a few times around the block now. No minority has been treated more fairly than this one, and you know it. 
You've reported it. Chairmanships, for instance, free debate, willingness to uh, apparently accept amendments ad infinitum. No minority's been treated more fairly. They're getting treated a lot more fairly than it, at 40 members than the Republicans were at 49, and you know that's true. So I think you can factor the, that, that statement for the nonsense that it is. How would you describe your move, Governor? Angry, annoyed, just this whole I, I, I'm it's sure. more animated than usual. I thought I was being pretty <laughs> calm here. Uh, I feel passionately about many of these issues. We've worked very hard, uh, first to secure majorities, to make the case to the public, to lay them responsibly in front of the General Assembly. I, you can go back and reread the state of the state or any other utterance. I've tried every way I know to stress the bipartisan nature of so much of what we have presented, so much of which they now uh, want to uh, condemn to death. And so, yes, I'm, I'm very disappointed at this. I'm surprised. I already acknowledged. I thought maybe when this happened it was um, about securing one big victory, which they have, and making one strong statement, which they have. And so, yes, I'm, I'm surprised that it turns out maybe to be more. I'm still hoping. No, I have not. I have not. Uh, exchanged supportive emails with uh, Governor Walker, but uh, that's, that, that's all. Mr. Bauer said one of the reasons they went out of state was your coming out in support of uh, what the Wisconsin governor is doing and that, his, that he had sent the police after the senators. After oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, look, no. You know, uh, I may agree with uh, and, and be supportive of what Governor Walker's trying to do, but uh, I guess we have a different outlook on this, uh, on, the, on the question of using the law enforcement authorities. You know, the, the situations there are so completely different. Um, his is a debate principally with government unions. And here, the, at least the, what touched it off was the uh, debate about labor laws in the private sector. And, um, uh, you know, um, uh, they're broke and we're not. I am constrained to say that if our Democratic friends wanted to flee to another state, they picked a good one. Indiana would look exactly like Illinois if they were still in charge. Remember that in 2005, this state was far more broke than Illinois. And um, so if they want to get a look at the Indiana that could have been, Flat broke, can't pay its bills, taxes raised multiple times, crumbling infrastructure, and a business environment that everybody wants out of instead of into, um, then their little venture in tourism was well chosen. Um, some of the uh, criticism I've seen nationally has um, less to do with some of the, uh, <coughs> the Democrat walkout and more to do with your willingness to see right to work taken off the table for the moment. Mm -hmm. I think it's a, I've said the same thing over and over. I think it's a very legitimate issue. It does cost us jobs. We hear it all the time. But uh, it, de it deserves, it's a big issue, and it deserves a full and open debate. And um, uh, I didn't put it in front of the public last year as we did these other agenda items, and neither did anybody else that I know of. And so I do think that a year of study and reflection, let people um, who oppose it try to Try to uh, support their point of view is a much better way to go, and I said so. I said I was concerned that it might jeopardize extremely important reforms that I'll bet most right-to-work supporters um, uh, support with nearly the same uh, fervency, and uh, that's proven, unfortunately, proven to be an accurate guess. Yeah, needs more work. Need, needs more work, I think. You're not give up on no, no, no. Do you think that uh, the two conservative divisions is speaking out? Do you think that we can afford that division? 
Well, uh, we're not doing anything that costs the state more money. Uh, and so uh, I think that from what I have seen, uh, people um, changed that provision based on some bad, in, bad financial information. And when they see right from financial information, they're going to want to change it again. Well, I won't say it's inappropriate. I, I happen to disagree with uh, some of the changes that have been made, but uh, long, you know, we've got, I hope, uh, uh, a, a legislature left, a lot of legislature left to work on it. Do you think both uh, criminal justice reform and local government reform can still be salvaged for discussion? Yes, I hope so, and I don't see any reason why not. I don't know how, but uh, as I said earlier, what will not happen is that we will turn tail based on the bullying and and in, and uh, you know unconscionable behavior of the Democratic minority and simply throw away an agenda that uh, we believe in and the people of Indiana voted for. But you said criminal justice reform and time shift reform um, were compromised in part by Republicans, not, not by Democrats. Not, I've never been against compromise. We talked about it on issue after issue. Um, you know, there'll always be a point beyond which we won't be able to agree, but uh, we're not there yet. You predicted the, the white right to work and world secession. Senator Long, <coughs> House Speaker Bosna, not to go there. Um, I can imagine why publicly you might not be expressing frustration with Speaker Bosna, but um, feel free if you'd like. And, um, <laughs> or have you spoken to him privately with any? I, I'm not just. I have no comment about this. I, I think I made my. I think. Open about being critical of Democrats um, about their what they've done here, but but it sounds like you knew this is exactly what they would do. So. Well, I didn't know. I, Republicans for yeah, I didn't know, and nobody knew. I mean, he has strong um, uh, feelings in his about this issue in his caucus, and. Um, Speaker Bauer appears to be a dictator uh, and get every, you know, keep everybody whipped into line, but I've never seen a Republican leader in either body who can do it. And so um, I have no particular criticism to, to offer. Um, you know, in one case, he was letting a bill actually be heard and aired and debated. Now, Speaker Bauer <laughs> is doing everything he, can, everything he can to see that bills are not heard and, and uh, debated and voted on. I really don't know how, and I'm not an expert on the uh, on the complexities of the legislative process. But uh, we do know from some past experience there often are ways um, within the rules uh, for um, a bill killed at the last minute, like this one, to uh, have a second chance. And then, as I said, um, if the speaker uh, persists, he can expect a special session. And if he walks out of that one, he can expect another one, and then another one. And every time we will post the bill that he has run up on the taxpayers of Indiana with his name and picture on the, on the uh, bottom line. If we manage to pass a budget but do not manage to vote on the, um, the education reforms, are the education reforms enough to call a special session? Sure. So what do you tell the taxpayers? Don't hold the actions of 35 people against everyone in public life. These uh, people have done something unprecedented and disgraceful and embarrassing, and you have a right to be aggravated. But first of all, let's give them a chance to come back. And if they do, then I think these last couple, three days will fade from memory pretty soon. At least they'll fade from mine. If they don't, it'll still be the actions of a very tiny and willful minority who for reasons they will have to explain, have shown contempt for you, the taxpayer, contempt for the democratic process and every voter who participated in it.